This is JBigTicket23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we are going to show you our HP Z230 workstation that we upgraded and optimized for gaming. So in the description of this video, we are going to post a link to our HP Z230 gaming computer blog page. And on this page, you will find all of the upgrades that we have done in this video and more. Uh, so if you're looking to upgrade or optimize your HP Z230 workstation for gaming or other high-end computing, check this page out. Uh, we go through processor upgrades, memory upgrades, graphics card upgrades, uh, ATX power supply upgrades, um, a whole bunch of other stuff on this page. All the information is free, so definitely check this page out. It could be a very, very helpful resource uh, for you. All right, so here are the specs on our HBZ230 workstation. Uh, we have a i7-4770 4th Gen Quad Core 3.4 GHz processor. It has a max turbo frequency of 3.9 GHz. We have 32 gig of DDR3 memory uh, running at 1600 megahertz. Um, the modules actually show 12800 on them, but they do run at 1600 megahertz. We have four eight gig modules installed, so that's how we get the 32 gig. Uh, we do have a Hynix 256 gig solid state drive installed. That's gonna be our boot device. You will see that we are going to install a Samsung 970 Evo 500 gig NVMe.2 solid state drive with adapter. Uh, we can't actually boot to that drive in this system, so that's why we did install that other 256 gig drive uh, so we can actually boot to an OS. Um, and then uh, the other big upgrade for gaming is the NVIDIA EVGA GTX 1080 Ti graphics card. And you're going to notice that we have an upgraded ATX power supply in this system. Uh, we had to install the EVGA 750 watt ATX power supply um, to actually accommodate for that high end graphics card. Uh, because this system uh, typically comes with a 400 watt power supply installed, it's just not enough wattage to install a high end graphics card. Um, so you'll want to check out our other video that we we posted on YouTube, um, and you'll be able to see how we installed that high end power supply. Uh, now, if you want to stick with your 400 watt power supply, uh, we did post some options on GreenPCGamers.com blog page in the description of this video. Um, so we did put some options on there if you want to stick with that power supply. Um, so hope is not lost if you uh, if you don't want to go through the trouble of upgrading to the 750 watt ATX power supply. All right, so here's a closer look at the system and the two upgrades that we're going to install in this video, uh, the GPU and the NVMe drive. Uh, the Z230 is going on about six, seven years old now. Um, here's a closer look at the USB ports and a couple of uh, audio ports on the front, which are kind of nice if you plan to plug a headset or a mic in for gaming, uh, which is really, really convenient for you know plugging in and talking on like a team chat. Um, here's a closer look at the back of the chassis. Um, here are the connections. Um, so it has two display ports and then one DVI port. Those are no longer going to be active once we install our graphics card. And you probably noticed that there were some USB 3.0 slots on this system. Those are very, very helpful if you plan to do any sort of VR. All right, so here's a closer look at our EVGA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. As you can see, we have two power adapters that we need to plug into the system. And here are the ports, a bunch of active ports, three display ports, one HDMI, one DVI. So because we installed that upgraded power supply, um, we have plenty of power for that graphics card. All right, here's our NVMe.2 solid state drive with the adapter. So this system doesn't have, an or doesn't have a port on the motherboard. Uh, so we do have to use this adapter to install this card. And again, this is not a bootable device. We will boot to our uh, two and a half inch solid state drive that we're gonna show you in a little bit. So you might, say why why install an nvme.2 solid state drive if you can't boot to it uh, well if you installed it in the correct io slot uh, they are three to six times faster uh, than a conventional sata drive um, or even a sata solid state drive uh, they boost io speeds on legacy systems and they do that by allowing you to open up really large uh, games programs or files um, much faster than you would with a regular drive so if you have like a big program that uh, takes forever to to, uh, to open up um, you know, maybe you have to go get a cup of coffee while, after you click uh, to open up whatever that program is. Um, well, if you install an NVMe.2 solid state drive, um, that program will open up much faster. Um, so that's why you would install that, uh, the NVMe.2 drive into your Z230. All right, so let's take a closer look inside the chassis. I'm going to remove our side panel. And so you're going to see our 750 watt power supply that we installed, modular power supply. Um, we've got our 
256 gig solid state boot device right here installed. Um, so that's going to hold our OS, which is Windows 10. And then uh, we are going to show you the I.O. slot. So we're going to utilize both PCIe X16 slots. One is going to be for our graphics card. The other one's going to be for our NVMe. Uh, reason being is we get much faster speeds on the NVMe in the PCIe X16 slot than we did the PCIe X4. And we'll show you that later on in the video. All right, here, here's our big bad 750 watt power supply. Closer look at it. Again, this is fully modular and it is a very custom install. So you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna watch that video um, that we posted earlier to show you how to install that. All right, so we're gonna remove our retention clips and remove two of the PCI blanks so that we can install our GTX 1080 Ti graphics card. Well, this is a fairly big card, so it does eat up two of the PCI slots. And so this card is pretty heavy, so all you really need to do is line this card up and let it drop right into that PCIe X16 slot. And then once we have that plugged in, we are going to go ahead and install our NVMe drive and the other PCIe X16 slot. Um, we, we chose this slot so we get maximum performance. So this card installs really, really, really easily. This card's very light. There's really nothing to it. All right, so install that card and you can put your retention clip back on to lock those two PCI cards into place. All right, now we need to plug in our power. Um, so the 750 watt power supply that we installed is very nice because it has two um, six or they can be eight pin power adapters for our GPU. And as you can see, we need one six pin and then we need one eight pin. So we'll break away one for the six pin and then the eight pin will connect to the, the connections together to get the full eight pins. And they are very, very easy to install like so. All right, so now we got our components installed. We're gonna go ahead and put our side panel back on, get the system plugged back in. Uh, we booted it into Windows 10. First thing we're gonna do is install the latest driver for our graphics card. Um, Cause that's gonna help with a lot of issues that could happen um, like video lag. So you can either use this auto detect your GPU or you can find the driver manually. Uh, there's a third option too that we're gonna show you. So we, choose, we chose to find it manually. Uh, we're gonna pick the latest driver. You can also uh, download or click on the GeForce Experience and the GeForce Experience is kind of a cool utility that NVIDIA made to help you optimize uh, your dry, or your, your, your games based off of what you have installed in your system. So if you download the GeForce Experience, it also has a driver uh, install utility. So if you, if you want, you can just use that. All right, so we ran benchmarks on this system with a GTX 1080 Ti installed. Um, so we used a benchmark called Furmark and basically what this simulates is like if you were playing like an optimized game. Um, so uh, we ran it with uh, three different uh, resolutions, uh, 1440, 1080, and 720. And as you can see at 1440, we averaged 112 frames per second, 1080, 165 frames per second, 720, 254 frames per second. And those were the average frames. Um, now this is just a simulation. So um, this might be different for you, uh, depending on what games you play, um, but it gives you a pretty good idea of where your system will stand if you install a GTX 1080 Ti graphics card into a Z230 workstation. So pretty decent results. All right, so now we boot it into Windows 10 again, and we are going to go ahead and go to disk management and assign our NVMe.2 drive a letter. So we right click on start, go to disk management, and then we're gonna right click on our unallocated NVMe drive and go through the steps. We are going to name our NVMe.2 solid state drive, uh, super fast drive, because this is where we wanna save all of our games or large programs or files because this, this solid state drive is gonna run super, super fast compared to our regular SATA solid state drive. So typically with our regular solid state drive, we were getting like 400 to 500 mag read write. And we're going to show you here in a second um, our benchmark with uh, Atos speed test. All right, so you can see um, we have access to our super fast drive now, our NVMe.2. All right, so this is a benchmark. Um, again, this was through uh, a program called 
Atto Benchmark, A-T-T-O. Um, and as you can see, this is our NVMe.2 solid state drive. Um, we were getting read, write speeds, uh, write speeds at 1.36 gig per second, and then read speeds at 1.45 gig per second. So that's pretty good. Um, it's not the max speed that uh, Samsung says on their on their spec sheet for this, but it's still insanely fast, especially for an old Z230 workstation. So that's going to boost I/O speed big time when we open up big games or programs or big files. So um, that's kind of kind of cool to see. Um, it's about three times faster than our other um, SATA solid state drive. So definitely worth a shot if you have big programs or files that you want to open up faster. All right, so we're going to go into our device manager and show you kind of our, our, our threads. Um, and we'll show you our graphics card and our solid state drives so you can see what they look like. All right, so you see we have eight threads. And now we're going to go into system and show you um, our 32 gig usable and then our CPU. So that's pretty much all we have for you on this video. If this video was helpful to you, please consider subscribing to the channel. We do tons of videos like this where we upgrade um, old engineering workstations. Um, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And thank you so much for watching.